Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a discussion about the new World of Warcraft expansion that got revealed at GamesCon 2015. We're going through the story, the new systems come into place, and my opinion what I'm looking for in this new expansion. I also like to talk about uh, my YouTube content of Let's Plays and Wild Guys and what I am hoping to achieve in the next few months. Alright, so to introduce the main features, uh, the new continent, the Broken Isles, we got cool new system, the artifact weapons, class order halls, level cup has been raised to 110, we, we heard about 9 dungeons and 2 raids, I'll explain those soon. The new honor system, you get another new, uh, you get another character boost, and uh, new world bosses, which is good. And also the other feature, the new hero class, the Demon Hunter. So, let's begin with the story. And what we heard about the story is, uh, once you uh, defeat the Legion and Draenor, Archimon, since go them back to a reality in, in Azeroth, and he resurrects, supposedly, um, Illidan. And we're not too sure why, because it's kind of odd that he works for the Burn Legion, but a demon hunter kills demons. Doesn't make much sense, but then again, Illidan had a pact to serve the Legion back in Warcraft 3 lore, like a very long time ago. And apparently, the story goes is the main portal is the tomb of Sargeras and that's gonna lean endless of legion coming through the world and one of the developers said it's gonna be the biggest legion invasion ever in Azeroth I don't know how they're gonna do that through gameplay but lore wise it's supposed to be but you know you never know they could say it but maybe in the books you know like when the war of the Asians when they came it was a really huge legion like if it tops that I'd be surprised Honestly, it was one of the biggest for sure. Um, so the Broken Shore in the pre-launch patch will be going to the Broken Isles in the pre-launch patch. That's what I meant. Sorry. Uh, to try to stop this uh, Legion, but apparently it's gonna be the same like the Dark Portal, like when he salted it, but they're gonna make it a lot more different and hopefully a lot more better and a lot more story wise like a lot more smoother I shall say and um it's cool cause uh apparently some crazy ass shit's supposed to happen but we don't know yet till all the pre-launch happens okay so um there's not much else that we learned from the story but we hear two Really cool things, two new characters, Illyria Aler and Trellian will make an appearance, but we don't know when. And we are also going to see a lot of new, uh, a lot of new uh, hero like uh, characters they haven't brought back in a while. So the first one is Maya Shadowsun. She is the person that uh, imprisoned Ilden for thousands of years till... Tarana um, released him from his prison when we needed his help when uh, Archimon was trying to blow up the world tree and some speculation has been going around by Maiev but when you kill Ilden the Black Temple Maiev was there and apparently a lot of people are thinking is Maiev took Ilden's body back to the warden prison and just left it in the in a in a cage or whatever it was in the cinematic, like kind of like a crystal of some sort. That's speculation. And um, another hero, another character they haven't brought back into the WoW uh, in the game is Xavius, and he is the purse one of the villains that has taken over the Emerald Dream and turned it into a nightmare. And we have to stop that corruption in the Broken Isles and the one of the new raids is the uh, Emerald Nightmare which I'm like super hyped about because it's the Emerald Dream and we never had any glimpse of the Emerald Dream in game yet and just probably seeing it like with your eyes I just I can't wait it's gonna be amazing 
And another another character that's gonna make appearance is Anun Rin. I think he's gonna just get bitch slapped by the Legion and he's gonna realize that you can't make peace with the Legion, you know. Cause he always try and make peace but it's not gonna happen. Like I think something's gonna happen to him. I believe that's gonna like him flip a switch. Um, there's another one that's getting some hints about the Naga returning because there's a dungeon called Eye of Sharo that Ashara's supposed to be in and hopefully it has some tie into the new expansion that's coming hopefully I really hope Naga has some influence in this future expansion it would be awesome but one of the villains that's supposed to help Queen Ashara is Ty Mitra's Athissa so I think that's pronounced and she's just her right hand man for Queen Ashara you know, she just kind of like one of the um, leaders of the Naga that helps with Queen Ashara. So we'll see her in the expansion. I don't know about Queen Ashara, but hopefully we do see her. And another two uh, characters or part of Cataclysm story they haven't like closed the book in yet is when Gen, Gen Greyman and Savannah's Moon Runner had the huge fight through Silver Pine Forest and Gilneas like we never resolved that conflict yet and they said they're brought, bringing back those two characters into the expansion so maybe we'll f finally see what happened when Savalinus tried to take Gilneas and what Gen Greyman tried to do back and of course we'll also see Kagar and Gul'dan because Gul'dan was you know he got tossed through the portal you know Kagar, you know, he is the new green Jesus in these expansions, so of course we'll see more of him. Alright, so okay, let's discuss about zones. So, the new capital hub is going to be Dalaran, which I'm pretty excited for, but I really hope it gets a revamp, and the main reason is, like, like I know it's, it's a cool, you know, neutral hub is pretty neat but it needs a new revamp just to update and hopefully get some new parts of the city I'm hoping for and what's it's just saying about Kagar is he taken over the Kirin Tor and so that means Kirin Tor is neutral again they're not for the Alliance because back in Miss Pandaria when Garrosh bombed Thermal Isles Jane was pissed because Ronin got killed and her apprentice and one her, one of the books, I, th I forget it's called, maybe, it's not Tide of War, I forget which book, but pretty sure you, get, you guys might know. But anyways, she hates the horror now with the burning passion, the burning passion. So, in Miss Pandora, she took all the Sun Striders, like the Horde faction hub, back in Wrath, and she started killing them, imprisoning them. And just trying to just do whatever just to get back some revenge. And so since a lot of the it seemed like the Alliance was really shunned about it. And same as like the horror was pretty, you know, concerned that the Karen Tor was gonna, you know, fight them. So I think Ronin came into place. It's, it's probably gonna be explained in the pre patch. Hopefully not in a book, because, you know, we like to see the stuff in action in the game. And hopefully Ronin you know, tells Jane to calm down, you know, take a vacation, you know. She needs some she needs a break. Alright. So one of the first zones we're gonna see is called Fal Shahra. It's a pinnacle of Druidism on Azeroth. That's where Mount Ferrian became the first Druid on a Cenaris. And this is where also the the Emerald Nightmare is at, and that's where we face Xavius. And um another zone is called Stormheim, and that's where the Vikral live which is pretty awesome because I love the Vikro and the, the lore is like amazing but that's when the Vikros left north a thousand years ago in search of their holy land and we will discover the halls of Fowler which is like Falahala and Helheim which is like hell for Vikros and we'll see home to two Titan keepers that have been in a war for a thousand years we'll learn about the origin of the Falkir, the Cavalier, as we ride the ships of soul into the Maw Hell we also fight fighting the Vico God King and his minions who are now means of the Burning Legion. Which is pretty interesting when Vicos are in this expansion scene where it's so holy but yet 
their minions of the Burn Legion now. So it's going to be very interesting what we're going to see in that. For sure. I know someone is called Asana. And it represents the bones of the ancient Nidos civilization. So when, you know, when the Nidos were at the Supreme. When the whole world was intact. And the well of tyranny was intact. We're going to see like, you know, the huge capital cities like. Um, which was which one is one that's a used to be a huge cap was Dire Mall. I forgot what's the Night of name for that, but that's a huge used to be a huge Night of Capital. Nothing like Darnassus, like it won't be that like ancient looking. Apparently it's supposed to be kind of modern but pretty ancient as well. Just because the new texture is in. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that zone. Um what we're gonna see in Sauna is the Night Elves that have been there for tens of thousand years that are uh, fighting against us because you know the puppets of the legion once again like this whole island is just the puppet legion so I wonder how the legion influences these races into fighting against the horde and the lions I'm going to be very uh, interested another zone is the high mountain it's home of the high mountain torrents and um this is like the baddest zone, kind of like Gorgon, where like the huge um, Grons live, all the savage-looking huge Genosaurs. You know, it's gonna, it's a zone full of the biggest, strongest creatures. And what's interesting is we're gonna see um, the Lair Earth Order to get some answers. So what that means is Nefarians. That's Nefarians Lair before you turn to Deathwing. Possibly Rathion might be there. That'd be pretty cool. Another character that'd be showing up in High Mountain is Nesmond Worry. So we would have another, you know, kill 15, raw, kill 15, you know, bullshit beast when Nesmond Worry wants for us. But hopefully it won't be that boring when it was like in BC and Wrath. Hopefully. And another um, zone is Surmar. And it's um, the Surmar elves that have been living for 10,000 years. And a flourish into advanced civilization because of the magical abilities. But of course, they're the pawn of the Burn Legion. Like, you know, just how they, somehow the Legion influenced them. It's going to be really interesting how we uncover how and why these races want to help the Legion. Maybe they're power craze and they want you know unlimited power because that's what the legion always offers to all these races all right so i think that covers the zone i might do some speculations zones right now like um asana apparently we're supposed to see queen ashara so i have a feeling um we won't we'll face queen ashara but we'll see her and hopefully a future patch is something to do with the Naga. I really hope or the next expansion leads to the Naga expansion in the South Seas which would be really cool. Um, High Mount, I speculated that we might see Rathrion and the Lair of the Earth Warder. Uh, Suramar, that's where one of the raids are and that's where we will finally kill Gul'dan because he's going to be the, the final boss in the first tier which is pretty cool. I can't wait to fight against Gul'dan. Um, what else? Is there any other speculations? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, yeah. This is a pretty cool speculation. But, um, I think the Vikrals left Northern with Tyr. And he was, um, one of the Titan Keepers back in Uldwar. But he disappeared for some odd reason. But he gave the Vikrals the first and the humans the glimpse of holy like the Nairu like he show him like holy powers so I feel like we're gonna see Tyr in Stormheim for sure and that'd be pretty badass because we have never heard about like we heard about him but you know he's just ne he's nowhere and this is like the only where he would be is in Stormheim in my opinion alright so if you guys watch the stream when Blizzard um, revealed they had this really cool system card artifact um, Basically, it's going to be the new legendary, this expansion. Um, we'll s every spec will have its own separate artifact, which is pretty cool. Um, after the quest of the Broken Shore, we'll seek out our artifact. And those artifacts could be spread out throughout the whole freaking game. Like, 
every class that's going somewhere in the world just to achieve the artifact, which is awesome. It's bringing back, like, this system is bringing back class quests, and that's what defines our class. Like, you know, like, when I remember this leveling up a shaman back, even, like, Wrath in BC when I was really young, I remember, like, you do the tome quest and, like, how you got your tomes. Like, I thought that was really cool, or how you learn your pal pal abilities when you're blood as a blood elf, like, it was really cool and unique, and, like, it made your class feel a lot different. With this artifact system now, it's really going to show the difference in the classes, and what it's going to be like when we see it. Like, I can't wait for the system. There's only one issue, though, is, like, we're going to have some crazy ass lore weapons, like the Ashbrainer, and Death the Frost Down Knights are going to make the weapons with fragments of the Frostmourne. It could be little shards. It won't be like a part of the huge blade, I'm guessing, probably like little pieces. But still, it's kind of like lore issue. There's a huge lore issue, in fact. Um, I'll, exp I'll uh, tell which ones they now so far as examples. So Shine Lawn and Staff of the Mist. It's a Mistweaver Monk. We'll go to Pender to seek out the Staff of Emperor Shaohao. So, Miss Weaver Monks will go into Pan back to Pandaria, look for his staff, which is awesome. I I love that they need to continue like the style of braiding content, like giving back the old content some purpose into its like in game part, like it's like current. Because if they rehash the old content, people will go back if it has a purpose, which I love. This um. We have Felmalorn is a sp spell sword we about Kalfos against Lich King Ice Crown Senator where a lost Fire Mages will seek out the blade, so we're Fire Mage is probably going maybe back to Ice Crown Senator though. I don't know, or just Ice Crown. Um Ego Spare is a new to the lore, it's a high mount torn weapon for survival hunters. It has very of animal themes, which is pretty cool. Like wolf bear and serpent, that's what they said. And speculation is survival is going to be merely spec. Reason is they're using a spear, and I don't think they're going to be a throwing spear. That makes that'll be silly. Like they won't add that. And um, Ice Brain and Soul Reaper of Blades forge out the shards of Frost Marlin. So that's when Frost Death Knights will go back to Ice Crown look for these shards. Um, Dune Hampers, Dune yeah, uh, not Doom Hampers, <laughs> Dune Hammers is weapon for enhancement shaman. So. That kind of spooks me because I like Thrall's character, and I don't think they will kill Thrall, but maybe he'll retire or get extremely ill or something like that. I don't think they will kill him off yet. Then it has to be something bad. It's like if it is, then it is, but I don't think it is. And um, another weapon is Ashbrainer, where they've been found to battle on the Broken Isles. So, unfortunately, people are speculating Tyrion Forging is going to have a huge factor somewhere in this expansion, and he might die. Possibly he might die because they fell in battle. Which, honestly, like, it won't be too bad. Like, he was a huge character through Northern, and he was one, he is my one of my favorite characters for sure in Wildlord. Like, what he's done, and, like, what a kind in this logical person how much he drives for the whole like the for like the holiness and in the world like it's a really good character all right so let's continue um and fanes of the first night saber is gonna be for feral and guardian druids and this is what kind of like with me iffy they said every every spec's gonna have its own artifact but that's that's two specs so i'm like okay that's kind of iffy but maybe they find it somewhere else separately. I don't know. It's not that bad. But what's cool with this, it's going to change the style of your bearing calf form. It's not just going to be a weapon. It's going to be your style of your bearing calf form, which is pretty awesome. It's going to make a lot of people play Pharaoh again, honestly. Okay. And another system is the class order halls. So basically, the lines of horde at each other's throats. So they're just too stumbling to help fight together once again so classes are, are saying fuck you guys we're gonna make our own kind of faction with our own classes just like the silver hand is you know with all the paladins you know um 
Ravenholm with the rogues, you know, sh Earthen Rain with the shaman. It's, gonna, it's just going to be like that, which is awesome. Um, three examples of the Order Hall, they said, is shamans are going to be located at the Maelstrom in a cave. Pounds will be in a hidden temple, I think the Light Hope Chapel, and Warlock will be its own Legion world. Legion portal world, which is going to be interesting. Um, only if your members of the class enter the hall, it's just like, um, just like how the Death Knight starting area is going to be. Um, what they said is, they really want to focus on your class identity in Legion. So hopefully every class should feel it different. That's what they quoted. Um, Order Hall is going to be similar to the follower system, but you will have a lot more fewer followers, but more in-world interactive with them and more established, more like, hmm, or how to wear this. Like, they're more meaningful, which is really good. It's not just some guy who you collect, you know, collecting honey, inspires a rack, and this bird guy is like, hey, you collect my honey. Um, okay, I'll help you out and fight against Iron Horde, which it doesn't feel like you did. It's just a Facebook game. It doesn't do much, you know. This is where um, the followers, like, they give example that they go on a scout mission and discover a cave, and then you go with them, explore that cave. It's going to be like kind of like scenarios, which is going to be cool. I don't know if they're going to be really repetitive. I wouldn't mind as long as is we do them like the same one every few weeks. So it doesn't feel as grinding. It still feels different. You know, after three months, you're only going to see that part of the zone three times on that class. And hopefully um, the class quests don't are not all the same. They all have difference and meaningful and like they all like represent their class. So hopefully all the classes um are class quests are all different. Um alright let's continue with Dungeons and Raids. Um Hall of Valor is one, it's level up dungeon throughout Legion. Um, similar to Valhalla, we're gonna see um, the Vrykrol, the God, the, the God Cain. We're gonna see how the Valkyries were made, like not like the undead ones from Northern, but more like the Shield Maidens. There's another one that's the Black Root Hold. It's the ancestral home of Lord Kratalis Ravencrest. He was one of the Knight uh, Highborn military leaders during the ancient war. I remember. Um, we'll see if all the wardens, that's where the demon hunters were awakened. We'll see Iris Shara, which is located in Suna, where we'll face Queen of Shara and the Naga. We'll be in Dark Heart Thicket, which is located in Falshara, at the base of that world tree in Falshara. And that's where, um, the Heart of Nightmare Corruption is going to be spread out. We're also going to see Nathurin's Lair and High Mountain, which I expect delayed. We'll see Rathi on there. Um, Helheim, which is like the opposite of Hel uh, Halls of Valor. Um, it's similar to Grimrill Depot, but except on a train. You're not going on a train to hell, you're going on a ship to hell. Which is pretty sick. You'd be going through crazy ass storms. I wonder what's going to look like. It hopefully looks amazing. Um, let's see. Um, Sir Marcedi, City and Night. That's where the Nightborn rule from the palace. The cities contain catacombs beneath it, normal house throughout the city, both of which will venture and discover ties to the Legion ultimate plan that is unfolding. So something crazy is going to be happening there. And that sounds like that one dungeon from uh, Cataclysm where you go through um, that uh, Oldham, I forgot what it's called. Uh, city of Tolvir, I think that's what it's called. Uh, and we we'll also will see um, Vile hole, which is kind of a rehash a bit, but to say, um, we're gonna learn more about the secrets of Dalaran through Vile hole, so maybe it won't be like, um, how you have to protect Dalaran. I think we're gonna go through the actual prison, find all the secrets, and um, let's continue with the raids. Alright, so they like the raid structure and Warlord's Drainer, it worked out well, and me braiding through it, it has it worked very well in my opinion. Just the starter raid with seven bosses, you know, pretty introductory. Um, it's unique to itself, like high mod it had its little purpose into the lore. You know, we face we face an ogre raid. You know, I'm I'm happy facing ogres. 
And then the first one is going to be um, Emerald Nightmare 7 bosses. We'll go through the Emerald Dream for the, like, what was Emerald Dream was the blueprint Azeroth, what is supposed to be the perfect version of the world, but it's going to be twisted and corrupted because it's the Emerald Nightmare, which Xavius has taken over the Emerald Dream and turned into a nightmare. So we will see Scenarius, we'll see Mafari, and it will face Xavius. Um, the second room we're going to see is Sermar Palace. It's a rave with 10 bosses. There's a place in Sermar which Grand Mitchus run the city. He's a broker to deal with the Legion and allow him to use corrupted pillars of creation to create the night wall and conduit of dark energy. And the layout structure is going to be similar to Black Temple, they said. Um, you start in an underground catacomb, so I'm guessing there might be a spider boss or un, you know, undead weird looking boss. It'd be cool. Hopefully the bosses in that raid have some uniqueness because Blizzard does pretty well with unique bosses like and how far for instance you fight some crazy ass looking bosses. I'm pretty happy with the bosses they offered and how far Citadel. And um Gul'dan's is gonna be the last boss and he won't run in away. And this tile of rain. It's uh nothing to be similar to what we've seen for the almost the past two years. Like past two years all we've seen is orcs, orcs and orcs and orcs and orcs. Bunch of spikes is everywhere, bunch of fell, you know, we saw Siege Orgamar, that's an Orgamar. You know, you once you go through it's like crazy what Garage has done. You go through um Black Rock Foundry, similar same style, uh halfway through Siege Orgamar. And then we have Hellfire Citadel, which is like pretty similar to all three. So this new raids that they're releasing are gonna be a lot more different. It's gonna feel a lot more refreshing, refreshing in my opinion. Um, okay, so we'll I'll explain the Demon Hunter now. So Demon Hunter is gonna be a new hero class. It starts at level 95. It's gonna wear leather. Um, when Elden got released I think what people are speculating is the wardens um, they capture the Eldari which are the demon hunters but they realize you know this invasion is coming what's best to fight the legion De demon hunters it's in their name like what Blizzard said in the in the um, live stream okay so it's gonna be a very agile like the mock but very hard hitting like a warrior is kinda what I got from it um, it's gonna have two specs: Havoc as a DPS spec and Vengeance as a tank spec. I'm only, I'm honestly absolutely fine with two specs. I honestly feel some classes need two specs in order to show the class. Um, a class who had a huge freaking issue with this was the Hunters. Every spec did not feel the different. It's it's all felt the same spammy. You know, roll your head across the cube, or kind of feeling. That's my opinion on hunters. It's pretty simple when it comes to PVE rotations. Um, another class that kind of had this issue was uh, was rogues too. Um, some people will say subtility and assassination were almost too similar, which I can understand. But they're saying they're gonna really rework hunters and rogues to have every spec to be unique, which I'm pretty excited for. Um, uh, there's no other class I can think of, because all of them are pretty well, but, you know, Hunters, they, that could have been a two-spec class, and honestly, same as Rogues, they could have made combat and sub tier assassination a lot more, you know, Rogue, you know, a lot more and more juiciness to the specs, and not have it be super spread out and diluted like how Hunters and Rogues were in this expansion. Um... Alright, so Demon Hunters they get double jump. You know, it's pretty awesome. Demon Hunters were led, they use Dagger's fist weapon, one hand axes, one hand maces, and one hand swords. They also release that they will have their artifact weapon that is glaives. So maybe they use war glaives as enough. I don't think so because Elden's back, so that won't be a thing. And only classes that can be Demon Hunters currently is Night Elves and Blood Elves. And I play Horde and me being raided through as a horde half your fucking raid is blood else. So seeing more blood else is gonna drive me nuts, but you know, just gotta deal with it. 
and the new Arna system that the release I'm looking forward to this like holy like this is like a new change and this is like so fluid so simple so rewarding so it sounds like they're getting rid of Arna gear but your hero gets stronger the more you level up this Arna system you rank from 1 to 50 and the more you level you get new abilities to use in PvP so once you're in the high 40s you're going to have almost every ability but the thing is it's kind of like the talent tree so it's like 1 to 50 or I forget it goes 1 to 15 and then the next little branch uh, gets released the next one and so forth so in each sector of the tree you only have a choice of one of the three I think it goes down to four columns and then three choices in each one so kinda like the talent tree which is pretty good and it will give some people to PvP because there's a lot of cosmetic rewards and it's saying they're like really good and your artifact um, if you level up your honor system and you do hardcore PvP, you will get rewarded with an artifact skin that's only available from PvP. So that's amazing, in my opinion. Um, let's see. That's really it for the honor system. I can't say much. Um, they're putting a bunch of PvP abilities, I heard, into the talent tree. So that this can be some abilities you've seen and the previous expansions they said um, that's what they so far release in Legion um, they had some developers did some interviews a couple days ago I'll go through that in a uh, future episode but this is this, uh, just a wrap up of what they uh, released in that live stream last Thursday on August 8th no, Six? Oh yeah, on six. Sorry about that. On August six. So hopefully, um, this helps you guys on explain on what Legion's gonna be. Uh, I'll be going through, you know, more Legion stuff. But I'm honestly like, um, I won't be, you know, putting all my time through Legion because I have spoiled myself for Warlords and. Once I started out Warlords, I already knew what's going to happen. It kind of ruined the fun for me. So I'm going to try to stay away as much as possible what people have found, you know, just through going, you know, through the system, you know, going through beta. I'm not going to try not to look th for that. The only stuff I'm going to read is what Blizzard's release, like developer Q&As and on the website. That's all I'm going to go through and just speculations. Okay. So thanks for watching in this discussion video and the next in, the next discuss, discussion I'm going to be is discussing about my future channel like YouTube channel what I'm hoping for you know content and like you know I'm having a lot of fun you know I only have 50 episodes and a few subscribers but you know hopefully you guys watch this because I really appreciate it because you know I, I'm realizing like how many views I'm getting now is crazy you know I'm getting like almost 50 views a day and that's like a lot to me in my opinion like it's, it's almost a lot because it's 50 individuals who take their time to watch a video all right anyways that's enough rambling um thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next discussion